My Canva account used to be a total disaster. I had nothing organized. I could rarely find what I was looking for. And we're talking even the products that I was selling, I had a hard time finding inside of Canva. If you struggle with organizing yourself inside of Canva as well, then this video is for you because I'm going to spill the tea on my top five favorite organizational hacks to use inside of Canva that will absolutely streamline your process and keep you really efficient inside of the platform so that you can get off of the platform and do what you do best, which is sell houses, meet people, get those clients, and do what you love to do. So let's dive in and I'm going to show you how you can use Canva to work smarter, not harder. Canva organizational tip number one is to use folders. So instead of starting our journey on the home page, we're going to head right to this tab on the left hand side projects and we're going to head right to folders. Now in this section, you can see that I've organized my own business with folders and these folders, they transfer over to Dropbox and Google Drive so that everything has its own designated folders. So let's take a look at how you would organize this for real estate. So I have my real estate example folder here. So first, you'll have a top level folder for listings. This is so important. This is never a folder that we mess with. It's never a folder that we manipulate in any way. We don't rename it as for one of our listings. Instead, every time we have a new listing, we're gonna come into our listings folder, add a new folder, and name it whatever it is our listing is. Now that we have this folder set up, we are going to work inside of our listing template folder. And the reason we're doing it this way is because Canva does not allow us to duplicate this entire folder. So instead, we're gonna set ourselves up by creating that first folder, and then we're gonna head back to our listing template folder where we have all of these assets already saved. The best way to organize these folders is in a way that you will remember the name of, so that when you're searching, when you're in your design space, you'll be able to easily find these folders. So inside your Instagram folder, you can have multiple file types that that reflect the type of listings that you generally work with. So let's say that 222 Canva Drive is a luxury condo. Great, you have the luxury condo suite right here. We're gonna open it up. Once we have opened the correct file, what we're gonna do is head to file and make a copy. That way we still have the original in our template folder, but now we have a new file that we can name 222 Canva Drive Insta Posts. Very important to label your file so that you can find it easily. And then we're going to head to File, Move to Folder, 222 Canva Drive. And now it's saved. Now, when you're ready to upload your listing photos, what we're going to do is not use the Uploads tab. We're going to head to Projects. And under Projects, we're going to type in 222 Canva Drive, Enter, Head to Folders, and you'll see it right here. So we're gonna click on that folder and we're gonna upload our listing photos right here into our Canva Drive folder. So under my Instagram folder, for example, I have three subfolders. Template banks are templates that you have either tweaked and edited to match your brand or they're ones that you've created from scratch yourself. These are all templates that I've created over time that I love and that I wanna reuse. So I always pop them into one file. So if ever I need to create something fast on social media, it's here and it's ready to go. This is how you work smarter, not harder. Okay, Canva hack number two is the uploads tab. So when you're in your design space, what often happens, and I was so guilty of this myself, is we tend to upload all of the content that we need for our current design using the uploads tab. My rule is anything that ends up in the uploads tab has to be deleted. It doesn't get to stick around. So for example, one of my favorite stock photo sites, it's a paid site, it's called Hot Stock. It's one of my favorite places to go to find photos for my own personal marketing. So instead of using the uploads tab for those photos, I head to projects, I'll type in Hot Stock, and you'll see here that there's a folder right here called Hot Stock. Then when I'm in this folder, I can just click these three dots and upload all of those images that I would like. So I encourage you to only use the uploads tab for things that you are willing to delete. Third organizational hack is using tags to organize your uploaded content. So I mentioned Hotstock 
And this is what I love to do with hot stock photos. So let's say I absolutely love this photo here. We're gonna click the three dots and click this tags button. And then we can start tagging it with search terms that we know we're gonna use to try to find it. So for me, that would be laptop for sure, pewter for sure, and workspace and hot stock. Okay, and then I'm gonna click the save tags. Now, when I head to projects, images, and search, if I type in laptop, it will be in the laptop section along with everything else that I've tagged laptop. Canva organizational hack number four is to star everything inside of Canva. So how does that work? Let's head to the projects tab. And then if we click on folders, you'll see a folder here called starred. If we head to the design tab and we type in modern and we see a template that we really love, three dots, star, and now it will be in our starred tab. If I head to projects and click on my starred folder, it will be right there along with everything else that I've ever starred. So this is such a great way to save all of your favorite assets from elements to photos to templates in one easy to access folder that you can reference back to when you need it over and over and over again. Super duper time saver. This is Canva hack number five. Use your brand kit. And if you stick around till the end, I'm gonna show you such a cool trick for your logo you are going to love it. So let's take a look at my own brand kit here. So number one is logos. This is where you wanna save every single variation of your logo that you have for easy access. And I'll show you why in a moment. Colors, every single color palette that you use. Next up is fonts and you can save your fonts either by their name or by how you use them. So heading, subheading, etc. Next up, we have the brand voice section, which I am amazed at how much I love this. I actually have a video that walks you through how to create captions really easily. I'll link to that below. And it uses this function to create captions so, so quickly. You'll love it. So it's really important that we nail our brand voice. So you wanna get crystal clear on what your brand voice is. The more accurate you are, the better this function works. I think for now it is only for the pro version. Next up, we have the photo section. I just pop all of my favorite photos, the ones that I can use over and over and over again into this section. It makes it super easy to find. And then the graphics for real estate, what I would use this section for is any patterns that you have for your brand, any backgrounds that you like to use often, any stickers or any icons, any embellishments that you use for your brand, I would keep in the graphics section. Now under icons for real estate, I would upload all of the icons that I use most frequently. So I promised you a really cool hack when it comes to your logo and I am about to deliver. You will love this. So normally when we are uploading our logos to Canva, most people will upload them as a PNG file with a transparent background. The problem with this is that PNG files are not scalable, meaning that when we try to make them bigger than the file allows, they tend to become pixelated. Also, we can't edit the color of PNG files. So I am going to show you right now a workaround for this. So I'm going to download this logo here. It's a PNG PNG file, you can see that here. And then I'm gonna head to a site called Convertio, and I'll link to that below as well. And all you're gonna do is upload your logo file, click this drop down here, and select SVG. And now we're gonna convert. When it's ready, you'll see this download button here. We're gonna download that to our computer. And then we're gonna head back to our logo section and I'm gonna add that right here. Okay, so now I have an SVG file and I have a PNG file. Let's head back to our 222 Canva Drive file. So if I wanted to add my logo to this post, I would select brand, see all, and this is our SVG file, but let's first show you what the PNG file looks like. Here I have it. And oh my goodness, I can't change the color and I can't see what this looks like at all. So instead, I'm gonna head to my brand kit and use my SVG file. And you'll notice as soon as I popped that into my post, the color tab popped up, which means that I can now change it to whatever color I want. And it's also scalable, meaning I can make it super big and it's still gonna look super good. So that is my trick for you. You can do this with everything from your favorite icons to your logo to anything that would have normally a transparent background that you would love to change the color of. You can use this trick. And that is it, my friends, my top five 
favorite Canva organizational hacks. I hope that was helpful. And if you loved this video, make sure to let me know below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your organizational hacks are. Let me know if I missed anything. And I will speak to you soon, my friends. Happy designing.